Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be talking about vector effects, vision effects, and HDR effects. And you may be wondering, what the effects are you talking about? Well, these are three AI tools included inside of the Corel design with Corel Draw and Perfect with AI. So we're talking about the Perfect with AI side of things. Now I went searching, there is not a lot of details on any of these programs. So I'm going to show you each one of them in action. By the way, the bundle also includes Corel Painter 2023, Corel Standard 2024. But the annoying thing is, they don't really break down what standard means. There are some features missing from the subscription version that I found really frustrating, something to warn you about. But then also you got PaintShop Pro, but we're going to be talking about these three plugins. Now they all come from a company called Distinct AI, Canadian-based company, uh, and I can't find one of the most important things when it comes to AI tools, and that is, you know, the ethicalness of their training data set. The best I could find is this. So we're going to go into the description for vector effects. This is one of the tools we're going to look at today. This is a standalone tool for creating vector style graphics, so SVG format. Um, and if I scroll to the very bottom of their descriptions, what you're going to see is responsible AI. With vector effects, we've committed to ethical AI. Our tools are designed to give you creative freedom while ensuring that your vector design stays within the bounds of responsible content generation. Uh, you can confidently create knowing that your work won't infringe on international uh, intellectual property or cross any lines, giving you peace of mind for both personal and commercial projects. One of those things, I can't find any more details. If any of you do, please let me know in the comments down below. If this is true, I think most people would be pretty content, but just something to be aware of as with all AI tools. All right, so let's go hands on with them all. The first one is a plugin. So these are actually plugins for Photoshop. Two out of three of them are. Uh, the uh, Vector Effects is a standalone application, but those other two are Photoshop plugins. As you can see from the fact that I am using Affinity Photo here, they work with Affinity Photo. They also work with uh, the Corel tools, PaintShop Pro, and of course, uh, Adobe Illustrator. So you can see here, plug is, this first one is HDR Studio. This is all about HDR effects on your image. And so is, I use a program called uh, Luminar to do this kind of stuff right now. Uh, see if I, for some reason, this tool also does not support maximizing, which is very frustrating. I do not know why that is the case. So uh, what you're seeing over here, this is uh, the before and after. So you can see the, let's look at the sky, for example and it's just basically cranking up the sky. Now you find it might be a little bit over much. You can control things on the fly, how the HDR uh, AI effect is being applied. I actually don't know if there's any AI going on here. Uh, we can also give it like an aquamarine, um, Vi like higher vibrancy and so on. And then you got controls over it. You can soften the effect. The nice thing is you can see the effects in real time. Uh, so basically if you're doing like massive uh, changes to your thing. So here's just a Brighten filter there before and after. Sometimes it does wonderful things. Sometimes it's very profound, like a wood grain effect or a Cephi effect or a two-tone effect like so. So it's, again, it's the kind of thing that you would normally do in like uh, Lightroom or Luminar and so on. And let's go ahead. If you want to apply it, you click save and close and it will boom, uh, send it back over to your tool of choice with the changes applied like this. And again, it is undoable and just like so. So that is the first one. This is implemented as a, uh, again, a plugin. So I'll go over here. Now we're gonna look at the next one. Uh, this is, again, implemented as a Photoshop plugin. So plugins, uh, and then we're gonna go here, vision effects. Now this is basically a stable diffusion generator uh, that uses your art as the input. There's no way to have this just do gen AI stuff where you have to have a source image. Also another very important thing about this is it works off your individual layer. So what we're gonna see in a second is it's gonna mangle this text, for example. What you'd often wanna do is have that kind of stuff in a separate layer and only the, the area that you want the AI to work with is what you would send in. In this case, I'm gonna let it play with the whole project. So we got this guy over over here, this was a, an aborted thumbnail I did at one point in time. It also only works with JPEGs, I think. One of those things to be aware of. So let's turn off their default prompt here and let's instead go um, an evil purple dinosaur. No idea who I'm talking about here, right? Another thing important to note is over here, AI engines, there's multiple. Uh, if you're on an Intel only, you're gonna run this one, but it is so slow compared to this one. So if you have a GPU, there's a CUDA-based driver. That is what I'm going to be using today. Now it is slowed down a little bit because uh, my GPU is also in use for encoding this video right now, but we'll go ahead and run it. You get an idea. So you can see down here, progress of the generation. Now the nice thing here is uh, there's no credits or usage or cost or anything. This is all running locally on your own machine. Uh, it does take up a fair bit of space though. It's one of those things to be aware of uh, when you're running this. So it's gonna go across and run each one of these. Uh, also be aware, it's probably running at about a third of the speed of, 
what it would be doing if I did not have video capture also running at the same time. And each one of these, you click it to preview it. You got the slide, the before and after. So here is the end result. Uh, again, it's AI. You're gonna have AI jank. It's gonna it's gonna have some issues. A lot of times you're gonna want to reiterate through until you get something that works for you. You also have the ability to do negative prompts. Uh, here, so if there's something you did not want it to do, you can tell it right there. But that gives you an idea of what this tool is all about. So that is with like a very uh, primitive input, but you get an idea of where it pulled its input from and how much you need to feed into it to get a result out of it. But let's try something more photorealistic. So this is from the thumbnail for the Unite for the Time Ghost example. I'm going to feed that one in instead. So let's go ahead, filter, send this one in, over, and boom. And we'll go with the default prompt. And this is the obviously trained off of Van Gogh's art style. And again, you got the ethics of this because it is obviously ripping off Van Gogh 100% in what we were about to do. But let's go, we'll let it have the default prompt as soon as that window comes back. And here we are. So the default prompt is in the style of Starry Nights by Vincent Van Gogh, extremely detailed digital painting, mystical colors, beautiful lighting. Again, if you're using NVIDIA, you can do a negative prompt here as well. You can set the strength. So this is basically how much of the original to keep. So if I want to be very subtle and just have it little tweaks to what I've already worked with, you turn this all the way to the left. You want pretty much a new image. You go all the way to the right. And this one tells you how much to basically pay attention to this this thing over here. And you kind of got a quality, how much work to go into it, how, you know, uh, how many iterations to run. And we'll go ahead and let this generate. Again, this is being slowed down because of my GPU, but you still get an idea of the, the overall speed. It's it's quick, uh, but I'm gonna pause it, let them all finish. And there you go. So let's do left to right, let's see the end result like so. So obviously it's taking its cues from the original image. You get an idea exactly what it's all about. It's actually doing a pretty solid job but of course, it is very much cloning the art style of Van Gogh. So do you have an issue with that? I can understand people that do, people that don't, but that is what the tool does. Now let's try with a slightly different prompt, my own instead of their hand-picked example. And this one is going to be an anime male with a mohawk in a neon futuristic city. And I don't want him to have a beard or facial hair, so let's do that as a negative. Uh, and what you can do is you actually start here and it'll go left to right. So we'll leave these two originals, for example. Uh, so, oh, but it'll also cl clear out what I just typed. All right, so here and then facial hair. All right, and we'll go ahead and generate that one. And here is your result, like boom to boom. Now you're getting a lot of stuff on the face because you had a lot of stuff on the face to start with. And there you can see the end result the three different versions that it iterated, like so. Uh, now, again, you've got the ability to say how important the text guidance is or how much to adhere to the original. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, all right, let's completely ignore the original. We'll start from this one. So let's go say here, less adherence and generate. And here you're seeing when you unshackle it, <laughs> it's basically just creating its own image completely. But again, you get a much different and more profound result. And now let's go to this final guy right here and say, all right, now almost nothing. And let's see what it does with uh, most adherence to the original image. And it's basically just sort of animeifying the original image. And I can actually see probably the most value in this because it's keeping it closest to the original tool you started with. Uh, but it's doing some pretty cool stuff with it. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is the uh, vision effects portion. And then if you like what you've got, you pick the, pick the layer that you want to send back uh, and then basically save it and it will drop back to your tool of choice with the updates that you just created. So not your traditional AI tool. And I actually think it's one that maybe artists would be less willing like to write off. It's, it's more of a, a working from your original work, especially if you say, all right, stay as close as possible to my original job. Uh, Again, I like the results when the artist is guiding it the most as possible. And then our final tool is a vector effect. Now this is your traditional gen, image gen stuff, gen AI, uh, but it's creating vector graphic results. So basically these are all scalable vector graphics output. Uh, so it is drawn with math. So in theory, it should make it easier to make alterations and changes to it. I will show you this one in just a second, export it out. It gives you an idea of the different results you can get using this tool. Now the cool thing with this particular tool is you can actually change the results after the fact. 
Uh, I also have, this one's a little bit different than the other two we saw earlier on, in that if you want to have it use a different model, so you see here there's the quality model here or a compatibility model, uh, for uh, NVIDIA GPUs. The thing is, this is a separate download. It's about six gigabytes in size. It's free included, all that. It's just no, uh, if you want to use your GPU, you're going to have to enable the additional models and set it up there, which is what I have done. So you see, here is the end result of our prompt. Uh, so this is a treasure chest with the lid open full of gold. Uh, you have the ID option of doing high and low detail. I'll show you that in just a second as well. Here is a high detail version of a ninja panda riding a giraffe. As you can see, Sometimes AI is absolutely and utterly crap. And this is definitely one of those kinds. So there's a lot, of, you know, it's definitely a panda ninja. They did a good job there. Everything else, definite fail. But this is, again, vector graphics driven. Here is where it kind of does a good job of it, more of a, a low res, um, simple prompt. This is just a juicy hamburger. Again, you can do negative prompts if you're using GPU. Uh, so now I can say no lettuce, like so. And we'll go ahead and generate, and then we'll see, so you get an idea of the performance. Don't, don't over judge the performance right now though, again, because my GPU is also being used for something else, but generally uh, it's pretty quick. So you see here, we're at uh, almost 100% now. Again, no credits or fees or anything. You use this infinitely. It is all running locally on your computer. And there is a hamburger with no lettuce. Now at the same time, there's a bun, and then there's another sub bun, so it's not Perfect. Uh, but another neat thing with this tool, and actually where I find it probably the coolest, is you've got the ability to do high or low detail gen. And if you're doing vector graphics, low detail is probably where you want to go most of the time. So we go ahead here and we can generate that as well. So here we're going to do a low detail version. And you see, much faster. So we're at um, 80%, 90%, and basically done. And there is a low detail version. And this is much more usable. And say you want to go ahead and get rid of some of these things, we probably could. I'll show you this one in an SVG in just a second. Here is another prompt. This is a kid splashing in a swimming pool. And this is a robin in a maple tree painted in watercolor, cartoon style, or straight branches are the the, the negative prompts on that one. Here you can see, again, AI can't do hands worth a damn. And for some reason, this looks like Elias Big Boy, just with no burger here. <laughs> but uh, that is gives you an idea of the kind of stuff that you can get out of these. By the way, you do have control over um, the generative effects here. I think they're pretty much on the fly. So if you want to have less detail, you can drop the detail down. Uh, I thought they were on the fly and you didn't have to regenerate, but maybe you do have to generate. Uh, let's switch this one up to high detail. We'll do a generate here and we'll see the end result of that. So maybe these only work on a high detail model. So we'll let this run and uh, there we go. So there is the end. And again, sometimes AI absolutely stinks. <laughs> it's one of those things to be aware of. By the way, everything is driven by the seed here. So this will generate the same image with the same seed. You switch out the seed, you will get a completely different generated image as a result. So that there is a vector effects and boom. So there you see kind of the, the end result of that one. This guy here, let's go ahead. We'll save the image out. It is an SVG. So we'll overwrite image.svg right there. And we'll open this one up in my vector editing tool of choice. Now you'll notice that I am still using Affinity Designer and not Corel Draw. I checked out Corel Draw. Uh, it's not for me. Uh, might be, you know, right up your alley. These kind of tools. I also hate Adobe Illustrator. So one of those things to put into perspective. So here you can see the end result. Everything here is drawn with math. So there you see your background right there. So if you want to have a different background, easy to switch. Now the question is how much, how useful are the layers it generates. And the answer is kinda. So if you wanted to come down here and get rid of the splash, you could do so with relative ease. Uh, but making edits, it's not gonna be like a handcrafted SVG, uh, but it is definitely more editable than a lot of things would be. So again, if there's stuff you just wanna get rid of, you often can just clean it up. So even if you don't like the end result of what it did, then there you can see example, the shadow, a little bit less easy to just get rid of. But again, you could also come in and uh, work on it on a node base. So if you wanted to move the shadow up, you can do so. So that's where the SVG side of things definitely comes in handy, is your post editing side of things. But if you're gonna notice in terms of the number of layers that it actually generates, it's a lot. It's definitely a lot. It's more editable than, than you would have with uh, pixel images for sure. So again, if you wanted this bun uh, to be a different color, you generally have that level of flexibility. Uh, and that's kind of the, the upside of working with SVG images. All right, so that's it for the hands-on portion.
To be honest, I thought they were going to be a lot worse than they are. Um, the big question, again, I have is about the eth um, the ethicalness of their data set. Again, all we have to go on is that they're saying it's res responsibly sourced. I would love to have uh, details on exactly what that means. Uh, because if it's all off of public domain and committed stuff, it's, you know, it's definitely a tool for your toolbox. You're going to notice this stuff works quite a bit different than your traditional, just straight gen AI side of things. Uh, and the thing that is the most gen AI side of thing, the vector effects, there's not a lot of vector or SVG generation tools out there. So it has its own unique niche on its own. But I actually think of all the tools I looked at, the only thing I may actually use is vision effects in the end, uh, just to do like subtle edits of something that I've already created. I just want to modify it a little bit. I really love the way that that worked. Uh, so this isn't just a raw image gen. It actually works with the artist works and kind of tweaks it. Uh, and I actually appreciate that aspect. And then the other thing is, again, a lot like Luminar. If I didn't have Luminar, uh, I would actually could see using HDR effects, but I have Luminar. So I will use Luminar going forward. So. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the Corel design with Corel Draw and Perfect with AI bundle. I'm actually more impressed with the AI stuff than I thought I was going to be, but I'm curious, what do you think? And again, if any of you can find an actual link to their data sets, uh, like the sourcing and the information on it, please do let me know. There's a remarkably little information about any of these tools at all. Um, so I would love to have more details of that. And if you could let me know, I will link it in the linked article. So let me know what you think. Uh, Corel design with Corel Draw and Perfect with AI, specifically vector effects, vision effects, and and HDR effects. Honestly, better than I was expecting, but it's, it's definitely AI tooling. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.